I imagine this is probably the face that Kyle Rittenhouse was making when he got this bit of news. And by bit of news, I mean this. A judge has ruled that a wrongful death suit against Kyle Rittenhouse is going to proceed because apparently one of the dads of the, one of the guys that was killed by him had filed that motion to go that filed that suit against him. And it, at first it was kind of up in the air of whether or not it was going to happen. But apparently the judge saw fit and saw enough there for them to go forward. So now it looks like Kyle Rittenhouse is about to be back in court again. He probably might be putting on another act like he did right here. A federal judge in Southeast Wisconsin ruled that a wrongful death lawsuit filed by a father, by the father of a man who was shot and killed by Kyle Rittenhouse during the Kenosha riots in August, 2020 can proceed against Rittenhouse police officers and others. The father of Anthony Huber, one of the two men shot and killed by Rittenhouse filed the lawsuit in 2021, accusing officers of allowing for a cons for a dangerous situation that violated his son's constitutional rights and resulted in his death. Anthony Huber's father, John Huber, also alleged that Rittenhouse, who was 17 at the time of the shootings, conspired with law enforcement to cause harm to protesters. John Huber is seeking unspecified damages from city officials, officer and officers and Rittenhouse himself. U.S. District Judge of the Eastern District of Wisconsin, Lynn Alderman, on Wednesday dismissed motions filed by Rittenhouse and the government defendants seeking to dismiss the civil rights lawsuit. In allowing the case against Rittenhouse and the others to proceed, the judge said that Anthony Huber's death could plausibly be regarded as having been prox proximately caused by the actions of the governmental defendants. Rittenhouse attorney Shane Martin said in a phone interview that it's important to note that the ruling doesn't address the merits of the case. It only allows it to proceed to the next phase. While we respect the judge's decision, we do not believe there is any evidence of a conspiracy and we are confident just as a Kenosha jury found Kyle's actions that evening were not wrongful and were undertaken in self-defense, Martin said. Attorneys and private investigators for John Huber spent over 100 hours trying to locate Rittenhouse, tracking down addresses in seven states before they found the home of his mother and sister in Florida. The lawsuit was served on Rittenhouse's sister, who said that he wasn't home. Alderman said that was sufficient to qualify as being served. Rittenhouse has argued that the case against him should be dismissed because he wasn't prim properly served with the lawsuit. Alderman dismissed that, saying that Rittenhouse is almost certainly evading service. Rittenhouse has been deliberately cagey about his whereabouts. Alderman wrote, although he denies living in Florida, he does not identify the place that he deems to be his residence. Attorneys for the law enforcement and government officials being sued did not immediately return email messages seeking comment. The ruling puts Anthony Huber's step family one step closer to justice for their son's needless death, said Anand Swaminathan. One of the attorneys for parents, John Huber and Karen Bloom, the Kenosha officials that created a powder keg situation by their actions, tried to claim that they cannot be held accountable for their unconstitutional conduct. That argument was soundly rejected today. Swami Nathan said in a statement, Rittenhouse was charged with homicide, attempted homicide and reckless endangerment for killing Anthony Huber and John Rosenbaum, Joseph Rosenbaum and wounding a third person with an AR style semi-automatic rifle in the summer of 2020 during a tumultuous night of protest in violence over the shooting of a black man, Jacob Blake, by a white Kenosha police officer. Rittenhouse, however, was acquitted on all charges in November 2021 after testifying that he acted in self-defense. Rittenhouse actions became a flashpoint in the debate over guns, vigilantism, and racial injustice across the nation. Rittenhouse went to Kenosha from his home nearby Antioch, Illinois, after businesses were ransacked and burned in the nights that followed Blake's shooting. You know what's interesting, though, is they constantly leave out what he did leading up to that, like when he got there. And I'm going to just leave that right there. If you know, you know. He joined other armed civilians on the streets carrying weapons. Authorities said was illegally purchased for him by a friend because he was underage. Rittenhouse first killed Rosenbaum, age 36, in the parking lot of an auto dealership. And as Rittenhouse ran from the scene, he stumbled and fell. Anthony Huber, age 26, struck Rittenhouse with a skateboard and tried to disarm him. Rittenhouse fell to the ground and shot Anthony Huber to death and wounded demonstrator Gage Grosskrutz. A, I, I probably messed up his name, age 27 in the arm. Video footage of the incident captured on smartphones by some in the area went viral on social media. This case is one of several ongoing civil lawsuits filed in the wake of the shootings. Gross Krutz, who is seeking 
to change his name because of harassment he's faced. Last year filed a similar lawsuit against Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse has maintained a high public profile, particularly on social media, where he is an outspoken advocate for gun rights. And he has nearly one million followers on Twitter and has spoken at conservative gatherings. Rittenhouse has also vowed to sue some celebrities and media figures. In early 2022, the firearm Rittenhouse used was destroyed by the Wisconsin State Crime Lab. You know what I find to also be interesting? Remember how I keep telling you how white people can be on cold with each other when it comes against us? This is one of those times where they was on cold with each other to be against each other because the three people that were either a killed or wounded by Rittenhouse were all white men. And they stood behind Rittenhouse and saying he was claiming self-defense. That's why I keep telling you, I said, don't forget. I mean, we can easily, of course, stay on a topic when it comes to when, how they're on code against us, but don't ever forget when they're on code with each other to go against each other. And this was one of those times. And it's crazy because it's a lot of black people that overlook that fact and how they were working with each other just to make sure he got off. And now they basically helped create a monster. I mean, I think he was already a monster before, but now they have amplified his power, so to speak. And now he's just floating around here. They basically, it's almost like they were trying to make Kyle Rottenhouse the second coming of George Zimmerman. We all know how that went down with Trayvon Martin. But we'll see what happens with this. I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, this is more. This is almost more of a personal thing because now it's the dad fighting for justice for his son, as he should. But we'll see what happens. I don't know what will happen if they actually got him on these charges. Will it... I'm sure there will be a money payout if there is anything there, if they get him. But the bigger question is, will he have to serve any jail time? And if so, how much?